Hi, it's Annie Grace. I am answering readers' questions today. And today I have a question that is all about blackouts. And really, what is the deal with blackouts? Like, what are they? How do they happen? What What's important about them? What, what can we learn? Um, so there's a lot to cover on this topic. First of all, I want to share that I was, frankly, really confused about blackouts. And so you might be too. And I think it, it sort of depends if you'd experienced them a lot or not. So what I'd experienced in my drinking, which I now know as a fragmentary or partial blackout, which was actually a gray out, was never a complete loss of chunks of time. I didn't experience that. I now know that that was because I was a really regular daily drinker. And it's funny because you can get into this debate of like, if I'm a regular drinker and I look at somebody who's like a binge drinker or who's drinking really a lot on just once or twice a week, I can look at them and they might be falling down and totally wasted. And I'm like, well, geez, at least I'm not like them. But then if you're somebody who drinks once or twice a week in humongous amounts, you can look at somebody like me who's like drinking two bottles of wine a night and be like, oh my gosh, well, at least I don't drink wine every night. And both things, although we think they're very different, they're both the same sort of things in the brain. And um, there's a lot more information about that in other videos. But in this one, we're going to talk about the idea of blackouts. And so why I was confused is because I had never had a blackout. And a blackout, what, what the term for it is in block, and that means complete and total blackout. Now, what I thought a blackout was, because I didn't understand, is I thought it was becoming unconscious, like blacking out, like there you are, you're on, you're on the couch, you're totally blacked out. That's, that's not what it is. And so <clears throat> what it is, is actually that you're totally conscious. In fact, you're conscious and you're articulate and you can do things like drive home or even have sex or go like act out complicated things, but you don't remember any of it. And so that's what a blackout is, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So again, there's two different types. There's these fragmentary, which is partial, and they're also called gray outs. And this I did experience. This was when you'd wake up the next morning and you'd be like, okay, I remember this. Now, what did I say? Now, how did we get back to the room? And you could kind of piece it together, but there were things that were a little fuzzy, but it was never like waking up, you know, in a stranger's room or in a place you don't remember where you got there or how you got there. Um, but a blackout is that experience. It's literally waking up perhaps and being like, what happened? What did I do? Where was I? How did this happen? And so that's what we want to talk about today. So, <clears throat> um, what happens is you have three types of memory, and I'm going to refer to my notes to make sure I get this right, but you have your sensory memory, which is basically your senses. So that's a few seconds. So you can remember for just a few seconds after you say, touch your cheek, how that felt, just a few seconds after. And then you have your short-term memory, which is a few seconds to a few minutes. So that's, you know, I can be like, oh, what did she just say or he just say, and that's short-term memory. And then you have your long-term memory, where, where your short-term memory or what's happening around you gets encoded and stored in the brain. And alcohol can impair what's happening between your short-term memory and your long-term memory. And so in Sarah Heppel's book, Blackout, she actually um, says exactly this. She says that the blood reaches a certain alcohol saturation point and it shuts down the hippocampus, the part of the brain that makes long-term memories. And so another way to think about this, kind of the, the simpler non-scientific way, is just to think, you have more or less, say you have a camera and that camera has a digital memory card and you're taking pictures with the camera um, and then you realize, oh my gosh, I didn't put in the memory card. So what's happening is you can still take pictures, you can still focus, you can still you know, zoom in and out with your camera, you can do all the functions a camera can do, but nothing is being recorded because the memory card isn't in there and because alcohol actually interrupts the pattern. Now, one thing that's interesting, and when you think about this, it's like, wow, alcohol can cause your brain to literally not remember what was happening. And like, not even not remember, but but literally not record it. That's really intense. Um, but I there's a study published by the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, and this was published by Aaron White, he's a PhD. And he says, quote, if recreational drugs were tools, then alcohol would be a sledgehammer. And what he means like this is like if a recreational drug is a screwdriver, then alcohol is a sledgehammer. Like it affects, it impairs your balance, it impairs your motor coordination, it impairs your decision making. And memory impairments after just one or two drinks 
is one of the many, many, many things that alcohol does in the brain. It literally affects almost every part of your brain, is what he's trying to say here. And so the fact that it can completely erase, and not even erase, but make it so your brain does not even like process or encode memories is just one of the many things that alcohol does. And so a few things to know about blackouts, they happen more frequently when your blood alcohol content rises very rapidly. So again, that's a reason that somebody who's maybe drinking every single day, but they're drinking a lot more, they might have developed more of a tolerance and they might be drinking slower. So for me, like I'd start drinking at five o'clock and I'd stop drinking at 10 o'clock. And so it'd be like, you know, constantly sipping on my glass of wine all throughout their night. Whereas if you're just going to one, you know, one night a week and you're like, okay, this is my few hours and I'm just, you know, pounding shots, you would be more likely to experience a blackout. And that's because your blood alcohol, how fast your blood alcohol is rising is connected to whether you're, um, whether you're going to, actually be able to encode those memories or not. And it's really hard, another thing that's important to know about blackouts, it's almost impossible for outside observer to know when somebody is in a blackout. Which, if you think about it, that's, that's scary because you might not know that your friend is not gonna be able to recall anything that he or she is doing. And because, so this is a quote again by, by Dr. Aaron White, and it says, quote, it can be quite difficult for an outside observer to tell if someone's in a blackout. The person could seem aware and articulate, but without any memory being recorded. And so it's very difficult. There's no, there's no way to know, there's no test to, sit, to say, is your memory actually being encoded? Is it actually being recorded? And you might need not even know that that person is like really intoxicated in some cases because people have, can have, I know for me, people are like, wow, I never even saw you drunk because I had such a high tolerance. I was so used to drinking that I could compensate for it to a place where I didn't even see, seem intoxicated. Now, another interesting fact about Black House is more than half of young people um, who are in universities have experienced a blackout before they graduate. And once you experience one, you're more likely to experience another one. And that is because I don't know all the science why, but once your brain has done that, it's more likely and easier to do it the next time. And so experiencing one blackout is often a very high indicator that you will experience more blackouts, which is interesting. Um, also interesting to note is that women are at higher risk. And this is because in general, women weigh less and we have less body content. So that's one of the reasons. So the alcohol concentrates faster in the brain. That's also one of the reasons that, you know, you if you see uh, safe drinking limits, you're gonna see that safe drinking limits for women are gonna be less than safe drinking limits for men. That's the exact same functionality there. But also the other thing that's interesting here is women um, often skip meals and eat less to drink more. And that was true for me. I would be like, okay, well, I know I'm gonna drink this much and that's so many calories, so I'm just not gonna have lunch or I'm just gonna have a few appetizers or whatever the case was, that's a very, that's something that a lot of women do, unfortunately, you know, in this in this day and age, and it just does contribute to to more blackouts. So that is what I know about blackouts. I know it's a scary topic. The good news is that um, you know, if if you just aren't drinking and you aren't raising your BAC as high as quickly, it really can be something you completely eliminate from your life. Um, but I know for me, the experiencing of the fragmentary blackouts or the in like the the gray out was awful. It was terrifying. The feeling of not being able to recall exactly what I said or who I said it to or exactly where I was, even though little pieces would be there, it was absolutely terrifying. And I've you know talked to to hundreds of people now who have reported on blackout blackouts, and it's it's really an awful feeling. You know, one of the worst feelings to to wake up and feel like, wow, I don't know what I did. Um, you're still yourself, you're still, you know, have access as, as much as alcohol will allow you to the parts of your brain that make you you, but you are are acting very much under the influence and unfortunately can't remember it. So I get a lot of questions about that and that is is the science on blackouts. And so this is a super scientific one and super just here's the facts, but that that is what blackouts are. Hey, it's Annie Grace. I wanna tell you about the most important book that I never wrote, and I mean that. This is This Naked Life. It's 48 true stories of people finding freedom from alcohol, and it's so inspiring. 
It's our stories, as you know from this podcast, that truly change us, that revolutionize what we believe is possible for ourselves. So it's This Naked Life. You can find it on Amazon or check it out online. Even download it 100% free at nakedlifestories.com. And every single copy that you buy, all the proceeds are 100% committed to keeping the alcohol experiment forever free for anybody who needs it. So check it out. It's such an inspirational book. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast as it truly helps the message reach somebody who might need to hear it today.